Hey folks, I'm Nicole Gilbert and this is the Nicole Gilbert Quilt YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to be taking you on a tour of the lovely LCD screen here on your Baby Lock Allegro. So let's dive in. There is a lot of fun stuff happening here. So let's start here. What is this guy that is flashing? This is the sensor that tells us that our presser foot is up. So we can't sew with our presser foot up. In order for that to stop flashing, you'll go ahead, put your presser foot down, and now that is no longer there, okay? Now, there are some things that are not showing right now that can pop up in the future, uh, depending on the stitches that we select. So right here, you'll see the foot for this stitch that I have in, which is just our 001. This is what pops up when the machine is turned on. That's the foot that we're going to use. Now, if I were to be doing a buttonhole or a zipper or any of our decorative stitches that require a specific foot, those pictures of the feet kind of pop up in these black areas that you see here. So you would see the appropriate foot and that will help you choose. Okay. Now, this light here is for our needle up, needle down position. When that light is there, it is saying that our needle position is set to down. To adjust that, the button is down here. If I touch that, that light goes away. So that is our needle up or down. Um, and so I like to have it on as a quilter, that way when I am piecing, uh, when I, uh, I'm able to be a little bit more hands-free because I can remove my hands and know that my needle is keeping my project in place. Okay, so now I am going to go into like what all these buttons do and then as things change up here, I'll kind of explain that as I go. So first up is these, this plus and minus button here. You see that this number is changing from 2 to 2.5 as I touch these buttons or you know further than that if I just kept going. Um, this is our stitch length. That is the length of our individual stitches. So it's at 2.5 right now. I typically sew at like a 2 personally but that's just me. That's where I piece at. So that is how we set our stitch length is this plus and minus over here. Now stitch width is using this plus and minus button over here. Now this might not be uh, something that you change very often, especially if you're a quilter because you're gonna be doing a lot of straight stitches. Now if you then are choosing to embellish something with one of the amazing decorative stitches that come with this machine, this is where you're gonna adjust how wide those stitches get. And this is also, and we'll come back to this in a moment, this is also the buttons that we're using to choose uh, a, a pattern from our memory because we can actually take our stitches, we can take our stitches, place them in a sequence and have the machine stitch out that sequence for us. How cool is that guys? Okay, so I, I just get so excited because I'm doing all of these walkthroughs and like basics and I'm just like, I am truly in awe of all the wonderful things this machine can do. Okay, so now this arrow and this arrow are our left and right keys and we touch the left and right key to select the pattern number. So you'll see if I went just, cause I'm at number one, if I go left, I'm at number 400. Cause this baby has got some stitch is, okay? And I mean, you can, you know, you see, you just keep on going and you're just like, holy bananas. And for some of these, you may also hear our needle move. And I know a few of you have been like, how do I move the needle? I'll get there. 
Okay. So that is gonna be how we kind of just scroll through the stitches. Now, if we go to the bigger, this is gonna jump us 10 stitches at a time. So we went from one to 11 to 21 to 20 to 31. And that's how we can kind of fast move through them so that we're not going one at a time through 400 stitches. Now we're back at one, okay? Now, speaking of okay, since we're in this row, this is our select key. So let's say I want the number 391, I press okay, it's in there, shebang, that's what we're doing. And then I can go back. All right, now this button here, this little pair of shears, the little scissors, uh, one thing that I have found to be a lot of fun uh, but could be potentially interesting, annoying, or problematic, or just you don't even notice, which it, depending on your personality, maybe something that bugs or that you absolutely adore. I absolutely adore it. There is an update to like sewing machine font that's happening on this machine. Uh, we have had the same picture of thread snips for I don't know how many years, 20 plus years, um, since thread snips became a thing, I think, on machines. And this year, we have some new scissors. They look a little different, but that's what they are. They're just our thread snips. By touching that button though, you will see that shears, those same shears have popped up up here. What's gonna happen now when I sew is that at the end of my stitch, it's going to do four tie off stitches and then trim my thread. So by touching that button and having that on, that's what it's gonna do. I don't necessarily want that on. I prefer to, when I need my thread snipped and I'm gonna use the thread snipper, to just use the hard button that's on the front of the machine, personally. Uh, but if you are somebody who wants that automation, it totally can be done and that's where you do it. This is our reinforcement stitch that bullseye that you see, um, it is uh, also can be referred to as a lock stitch. Uh, and this will sew four tie offs in the same position when the machine stops running. So our thread snips are going to do four tie offs and snip. The lock stitch is going to do four tie offs and stop. So those are your two ways to get like automatic tie offs, which is good to know. Okay, now number right down here, this bottom corner, this one is going to be our buttonhole, okay? And so it's telling us that we have to do some things with our presser feet change them out and it's showing us that we are no longer using that other presser foot that was there we're now on that buttonhole foot okay so every time we touch a button we want to reevaluate our LCD screen because it's updating us on what we should do and how we should do it okay so that's buttonholes now that little sideways heart that little sideways heart is decorative stitches and this is another way to quickly move through the, uh, all of the stitches that you have on the inside of that lid of your machine. Uh, so like if I press the buttonhole, you see it jumped to number seven because number seven through number 18 are my buttonhole feet, are my buttonholes. So it's just jumping to number seven and then I could quickly scroll through which buttonhole I want. So that's another convenient thing. So you're not, you're not like sitting manually scrolling through everything. Same thing with that little heart. It's jumping to number 157 and that's like a very specific style of the decorative stitches. If I go to the little butterfly, it jumps us to number 62. That's the other. So 62 through 156 are very in a row chain like decorative stitches. 157, that heart, is like individual ones. Now a good way to remember it 
is that that butterfly looks like it has a straight line through it and that's like that line is like the chain. So if you want to go to any of those chain decorative stitches, go to the butterfly. If you want to go to the individualized decorative stitches, go to the heart. Make sense? All right. So if you have any questions, drop them in the chat below. This kind of gets us to pops through straight stitches and zigzag stitches. So if I press it first time, I'm at 001 and we're at the straight stitch. That's our first straight stitch. I pop it again and it goes to number 23, which is our first true zigzag stitch. And so that's a quick way to pop through and be like, okay, uh, I just need a zigzag real quick, hit it. I just need a straight stitch real quick, hit it. How cool is that? And then here is our alphabet and that pops us to 201. That's where our alphabet starts. And then we can scroll through. I mean, come on guys, so awesome. So even though there's a lot of stitches, it's actually very easy to navigate once you get familiar to what these buttons mean. You don't necessarily need to memorize those stitches on the top. Once you know these buttons, it's gonna get you to where you need to be, okay? Now this little triangle with the line down the middle, this is so that we can mirror our stitches. Now I'm gonna go to, let's see, what's a good one to get mirrored? So you see how it's got like this like peaks? It's kind of, it's blanket stitch-esque. It's not a true blanket stitch. Actually, I could probably just go to a true blanket stitch and call it a day so if you can really see this. So we've got a blanket stitch, okay? You can see that straight line and then it puts in those tacks for a blanket stitch. Let's say though, we don't want the tacks to go in that direction. We want the tacks to go in this direction. If you press that triangle, it will boom mirror it to the other side. No doing the mental gymnastics of figuring out which way you should be feeding your fabric and should I stitch this from the other side? Will that make it work? Nope. Just hit mirror and you are good to go. It'll flip flop that for you. Now these double needles right here are exactly what it sounds like. Twin needles. We're putting it in twin needle mode. You will know that you're in twin needle mode when you see the twin needles up here. So these buttons are just the buttons that tell you, hey, this is the part that we're navigating to. Up here is what's telling us what's actually going on, okay? I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward, guys, and I uh, am happy to help with any questions that you may have. Now, this fun little guy, that is our memory mode, this little, nine patch. So this is our memory mode. And memory mode is where I was talking, remember earlier I said that we can actually save our different stitches in a row and create a pattern and stitch out that pattern? This is where that's gonna go. And it's there's a lot of information and a lot to unpack there. So I don't necessarily wanna go into that too deep right now but no, there will be more information coming your way on that because it's, it's a really great, robust feature that you have there. Okay, and so then now, the last button we have that I haven't discussed yet is these kind of circular arrows, this uh, cycle, if you will. Um, I don't know why I just called it cycle, I should call it what it is, which is the repeat mode key. Um, Whenever you use that key, the pattern is repeated and automatically sewn until the play button is pressed to stop the machine. I'm gonna repeat that. So let's say you have a series of patterns that you have set up and you go ahead and you press go and it's sewing that series of patterns. If you hit repeat mode, it's gonna keep going, it's gonna loop through those stitches over and over again. So let's say you have this beautiful chain that you put together because you want to uh, decorate the hem of a pair of pants and your pattern is like four stitches long, but obviously you want it repeated like 
20 times to get all the way around that hem. You repeat repeat mode and it will keep going through that, la that list of patterns, that sequence over and over and over again until you tell it to stop. How cool is that? Come on guys. I mean, things are pretty freaking awesome. But uh, overall, that is our Allegro LCD screen and buttons in a nutshell. Some of these buttons have a lot of robust features and there will be future videos on those features. Uh, but I just wanted to go ahead and throw this out there so that you are understand and are a little bit more comfortable and familiar. If you have any questions, go ahead, drop them in the comments. I am happy to help. I will see you guys soon. Happy sewing.